Legal Forum for Oppressed Voices of Kashmir, established in April 2019, is an international legal organization with a vision to provide justice to Kashmiris who are living under illegal Indian occupation. Its members are indigenous people of the occupied territory in Jammu, Kashmir. The aim of the organization is to defend the political, social, and human rights of Kashmiris and to promote the UN-sanctioned right to self-determination. LFOVK works to address the consequences of marginalization, working with its members to promote their democratic rights, to provide information, and to articulate creative and nonviolent strategies for resolving the conflict. The principle of humanity stipulates that all humans have the capacity and ability to show respect and care for all, even their sworn enemies. The notion of humanity is central to the human condition and separates humans from animals. The 73 years of India's illegal occupation of Kashmir is evident in the fact that people living in the region do not have a right to be treated as humans. History of Kashmir Dispute After the British suzerainty lapsed on August 15, 1947, and the complete independence for both dominions, India and Pakistan, was announced, the state of JNK did not accede to any of the two dominions and maintained its independent character. On August 12, 1947, a standstill agreement was executed between the rulers of JNK and Pakistan on arrangements related to communications, supplies, postal and telegraph services, but it did not extend to defense and foreign affairs. The independent position of Kashmir remained intact until October 2, 1947, when the trouble began. The Muslim population of Jammu and Poonch were ordered to evacuate their homes forthwith, but before the order could be implemented, an ethnic cleansing of Muslims was started by Dagra forces and lakhs of people were massacred in cold blood. Times of London observed, 237,000 Muslims were systematically exterminated unless they escaped to Pakistan along the border by the forces of Dagra, headed by the Maharaja in person. The indigenous guerrillas of Kashmir in self-defense responded to the Maharaja's forces, and on 21-22 October, the Patan tribesmen from tribal areas of Pakistan Northwest Frontier Province entered into Kashmir to help Muslims who were facing the atrocities of Maharaja's forces. Since the Maharaja's forces were unable to contain the uprising, he sent his deputy prime minister, R. L. Batra, to New Delhi on October 24, 1947 for help. India agreed to assist to the condition of temporary accession. The Nehru's cable to Atli dated October 26, 1947. We have received urgent appeal for assistance from Kashmir government. We would be disposed to give favorable consideration to such requests from any friendly state. Kashmir's northern frontiers, as you are aware, run in common with those three countries, Afghanistan, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, and China. Security of Kashmir, which must depend upon control of internal tranquility and existence of stable government, is vital to security of India, especially since part of the southern boundary of Kashmir and India are common. Helping Kashmir, therefore, is an obligation of national interest to India. I should like to make it clear that question of aiding Kashmir in this emergency is not designed in any way to influence the state to accede to India. Pundit Jawaharlal Nehru's telegram to Likat Ali Khan, Prime Minister of Pakistan, dated October 28, 1947. I wish to ensure you that action the government of India has taken has been forced upon them by circumstances and imminent and grave danger to Srinagar. They have no desire to intervene in affairs of Kashmir state after raiders have been driven away and law and order established. In regard to accession, also it has been made clear that this is subject to reference to people of state and their decision. Government of India have no desire to impose any decision and will abide by people's wishes, but those cannot be ascertained till peace and law and order prevail. Protection of Kashmir from armed raids thus becomes first objective and in this, we trust we shall have your cooperation. That this matter could be affirmed or cancelled by the people of Kashmir according to their wishes. We do not wish to win people against their will with the help of armed force. The written promises regarding the plebiscite made by the Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, however, proved hollow. 
Instead of adhering to those commitments, he directed his representative at UN, P. P. Pillai, to send a letter to the President of Security Council on January 1, 1948, to lodge a complaint against Pakistan in the Security Council. The complaint made by the representative of India at UN was responded to by Pakistan by lodging a counter complaint against India, stating therein, besides other things, that India has obtained the accession of J&K by fraud and violence and large-scale massacres and atrocities on Muslims of J&K perpetrated by the armed forces of Maharaja and Indian Union and by the non-Muslim subjects of the Maharaja. In total, 11 resolutions were adopted by the United Nations Security Council on Kashmir dispute and every resolution reaffirmed the principle of self-determination and direct demilitarization by both countries. Over the next 73 years, India and Pakistan fought three wars over Kashmir, turning it into the most militarized zone in the world. In February 2019, the situation between the two nuclear-armed neighbors escalated again when a local Kashmiri rebel rammed his explosive-laden car into a paramilitary forces vehicle, killing 42 occupational forces personnel in south of Kashmir. The attack was considered as worst in 30 years of the armed conflict. In 1989, Kashmiri started an armed struggle against the gross human rights violations in occupied territory. The different indigenous rebel groups also started action to achieve right of self-determination for the occupied territory. Since then, the Indian Occupational Army has targeted civilian populations. During the peak of armed struggle between 1990 and 1995, Kashmir witnessed the worst times. During these five years, Indian occupational forces committed 11 mass massacres killing hundreds of civilians. In 1995, the Indian Army raped around 150 women in a northern Kashmir village. India holds on to the occupied Kashmir territory by deploying over 700,000 troops who have committed grave war crimes and other human rights violations, like rapes. <laughs> I <laughs> Tortures, human shield, and have subjected people to enforced disappearances, which continue to this day. The number of civilians killed in Kashmir since the beginning of armed struggle is estimated to be between 80,000 to 100,000. Although India has ratified the Geneva Convention 1950 and also incorporated Geneva Convention Act 1960 as domestic legislation, but it has never fulfilled the obligation of international humanitarian law. India willfully denies to ratify Convention Against Torture, International Convention Against Enforced Disappearance, and Rome Statute 1998, all because it is involved in heinous war crimes and ignores to accept the categories of international armed conflict and non-international armed conflict. But the position no longer remains valid as 1. India is signatory to all four Geneva Conventions which safeguard civilians and their properties during the international armed conflict and non-international armed conflict. 2. India is party to Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons, 1980, which governs the non-international armed conflict. 3. India signed the International Covenants on Civil and Political Rights Prohibiting Torture. 4. India is party to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the United States Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization that respect the right of self-determination. The people of Kashmir desperately need an intervention against the war crimes committed by the Indian Occupational Forces. In 2010, WikiLeaks confirmed that torture is rampant in occupied Kashmir. 
The cable enumerated various forms of torture, including the use of roller, electric shocks, sexual abuse, beating, suspension from ceiling, crushing of muscles, and other forms of physical assault. Post-August 5, after India illegally annexed the occupied territory, multiple reports bear witness that India is using all methods of torture against the occupied people till this day. International People's Tribunal on Human Rights and Justice, a human rights group, in 2009 released a report which claimed that 2,700 unknown, unmarked, and mass graves containing at least 2,900 bodies in 55 villages in three districts, Bandapura, Baramula and Kopwara of northern Kashmir have been probed. It claimed 87.9% of the cadavers in the graves were unnamed. The report of the United Nations Office of the High Commission for Human Rights highlighted the atrocities of Indian law enforcement agencies and recommended investigations into human rights violations in the occupied territory. The Commission also highlighted chronic impunity for human rights violations committed by Indian armed forces in the region. The report pointed out the black laws in force in the region, such as Armed Forces Special Power Act. There is a legislation called the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, wherein that the army personnel, whatever they do, they rape, they disappear, they murder, they torture people there randomly, and then they cannot be prosecuted. Government of India is convinced that they can get away with everything. And Public Safety Act, which have created structures that obstruct the normal course of law impending accountability, and jeopardizing the right to remedy of victims of human rights violations. The government of India recently annexed the territory by unilateral action on the 5th of August 2019, which amounts to an act of aggression.